Our scripture lesson this morning comes from 1 Peter chapter 5, the first 14 verses. Therefore, I have a request for the elders among you. I ask this as a fellow elder and a witness of Christ's sufferings and as one who shares in the glory that is about to be revealed. I urge the elders, like shepherds, tend the flock of God among you. Watch over it. Don't shepherd because you must, but do it voluntarily for God. Don't shepherd greedily, but do it eagerly. Don't shepherd by ruling over those entrusted to your care, but become examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive an unfading crown of glory. In the same way, I urge you who are younger, accept the authority of the elders, and everyone, clothe yourselves with humility toward each other. God stands against the proud, but he gives favor to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under God's power, so that he may raise you up in the last day. Throw all your anxiety onto him, because he cares about you. Be clear-headed. Keep alert. Your accuser, the devil, is on the prowl like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith. Do so in the knowledge that your fellow believers are enduring the same suffering throughout the world. After you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, the one who called you into his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, will himself restore, empower, strengthen, and reestablish you. To him be power forever and always. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Well, the Lord be with you. When Liz gave me the text, I thought, okay. And I do this every time. I go, yeah, I got nothing. And I have nothing. But the Spirit and Peter have something. So the first thing I did, because I am a study type of person, okay, I went to all my textbooks from my pastoral care classes. I've got three or four of them. Do you know that on the topic of suffering for your faith and how pastors should care for their congregations when they are suffering for their faith, do you know how many references I found in my pastoral care textbooks? Exactly. In the back, right? Zero, because they're all written by the Western authors, right? And if, if these books had been written by people in the Sudan, they'd been written by people in Egypt, China, it, maybe they'd have had references, but we don't have the same sorts of trials that folks did in Peter's time. But I'm going to rely on Peter here because Peter says, basically, be ready and be prepared. Suffering will come. There will come a time when we will suffer for our faith in some way. When I was in Cuba in the late 90s, we were visiting with the church there, the Presbyterian church there, and um, they said, we're not persecuted here, we're discriminated against. And we may have some of those pains, but not like, not like a true persecution. They felt like they were not persecuted because they were not killed for their faith. But this still has a message for us. So Peter in the first chapter <clears throat> says, be ready for action. Prepare your minds for action. The term that he uses there is actually bind up your skirts. And I have this idea of like gather yourself together to jump out of a plane, right? You do the preparation ahead of time, right? Before you gather your courage and gather your, your clothes up to leap into action or to go into a river, or something like, you've got to get ready. It says, prepare your mind um, for action. When, <clears throat> a little bit later, Peter in the chapter 4 says, or the fourth chapter says, um, the end of all things is near. He didn't know how near. We don't know how near. But things are going to change, and there will be suffering to come. And so now in this chapter... Um, in this text today, Peter says, to the elders, and what he's really saying is to the church leaders, and he doesn't give you all a list or give us a list of what we need to do, but he does tell us 
how to do it. He gives this broad statement. He says, be shepherds. Watch over the flock that's been given to you, right? Be shepherds. Not a lot of detail there, right? Not a lot of detail. But he does say how, and there's some, some detail there. He says, willingly. He says, eagerly. He says, authentically. So, with a willing heart, do what you're called to do. Be eager to serve, not to get power, not to get honor, not to get money, but be eager to serve and practice before you preach. You have to be an example and do it. You have to do what you want the flock to do. So when you consider your role as a church leader, because many of you are, um, think about those meetings. I was thinking about this. How do we put it in today? So those meetings to go, oh, I get to go to a meeting today. I don't know that my heart's always there, okay? Um, to be eager, I get to go and, and go to Presbytery and, and sit through lots of reports. But actually, I'm nerdy enough that I actually do like that. I'm just me, okay? I'm that one, right? But authentically, and to go. And I thought about this again with the training that we have to do to go with an open heart and a willing heart. And if you've ever been a teacher or a student, you know if you come ready to do this, eager to learn from someone, and that's going to come later about submitting ourselves, it does make a difference, doesn't it, in how you perceive that day instead of, well, you know, that's four hours of my life, I'll never get back, right? If you can say, I'm going to learn something, and I'm going to be here to support the people who are leading this meeting. If you've ever been the leader of a meeting or the moderator of a meeting, you really appreciate the folks who give you the feedback, don't you? Just that they're there and they're on your side because you all nod for me and I appreciate that. <laughs> so he says this to the, to the elders, be shepherds. And then to the youngers and, and some some scholars think this actually means people who are younger in terms of age, in terms of the calendar, but many scholars believe that this simply means those who are not elders in leadership. And in our denomination, in our church, that kind of rotates some, right? But so to the youngers, submit yourselves to those in authority. He basically says, be the flock. You're going to be the shepherds, you're going to be the flock. Work together, you're going to be the flock. And it's not a matter of oppressing anybody or anything like that. You're going to be the flock. They're going to provide the leadership willingly, eagerly, authentically. And then the flock has to do it the same way. We have to be the flock willingly, eagerly, authentically. I had this example. There have been times when I've made a suggestion and it has not been accepted. For example... If, if, if the church decides they want to do some activity for the community, and I think it would be a great idea to have a community dog wash, right? And we present it to the session, and the session says, no, we're going to go with a car wash. What do I do next? As a faithful, authentic, willing, and eager member of the flock, I drive my car to the car wash. I come with a sponge. I hand out flyers, right? Because that's part of submitting ourselves and all of us being humble. So to the, old, to the elders, to the youngers, Peter says, all of you together, you need to bind yourselves in humility. This is sort of a how to be the flock. When they use this term, clothe yourselves in humility, it's actually a binding up. So you bind yourself in humility. You wrap yourself in humility in relationship to one another. But could it be that we bind ourselves together in humility? When Jesus said, I command you to love one another, you can't be lording it over anybody and be humble. You can't be undermining when you're humble. So when we be the flock, we need to remember that we are all sinners, that Christ died for us, right? That Christ died for each of us in this congregation. So folks, 
if this is my week to make a mistake, it's okay, because next week is your turn, right? So there's really none of this, ooh, boy, this is not going to work right, this is bad or whatever. You can't do that. We have to be bound together in humility, not humiliation, right? And to bring us together. So we don't need to be worrying so much about our reputation, our honor. God takes care of that under God's mighty hand. That's where the honor is taken care of. Not in what we say or do. We respect and humble ourselves to one another and, and before God. But we don't have to worry about our honor. Our honor. The next thing he says in How to Be the Flock I have to tell you, I had never thought of it this way. Cast your anxiety on the Lord. Think about that. When I want to give over my anxieties to God, do you know what I do? I very gently and reverently lay it there. I take good care of that anxiety and that worry. And what does Peter say? He says, just chuck it. It's the same verb as throwing coats over a donkey, which is used in the Gospel of Luke. I mean, it's yeet. Is that, is that an old word now? Do you all know that? You have no regard for where it's going to go. You have no regard for what's going to happen to it. Think of donating a car for an auction. You donate the car for the auction. It's auctioned off. It's away from you. You don't go back to it. You don't go back to it and check the tire pressure or check the oil. It's gone. I mean, and it's like some force. So with some force, you've got to cast that anxiety away. It can't be there to get between us. We have to be the flock. And this is why it's important. This is the next thing he says. He says, be alert. Be alert. Um, be aware. Watching. Remember, the shepherds are watching over the flock, looking at them as a whole. Who are the stragglers? Who are the outliers? Because we have to be alert because our enemy, the devil, is like a prowling, roaring lion. You've seen nature shows, right? Anybody not see a nature show? Okay. Who does the lion get? Gets the little weak ones at the edges, right? So to keep all of us tight with one another, to bind the flock together is for the safety. And that's the shepherd's role. And that's our role as the flock, we got to stay tight, right? If you see stragglers, and strugglers are not necessarily stragglers, right? We can struggle and still be tight. But if you see folks who are on the edges, on the fringes, reach out and gather them in. I wonder sometimes, do we forget if we have to be distant, right? We can still be connected. This is vacation time. You can still send somebody a test, text, I'm praying for you. Are you doing okay? What do you need me to pray for you for? How can I be praying for you? And be authentic in that. And give folks a chance to, to talk about it. We keep hearing about all the mental wellness issues, right? Or mental illness issues, both ends, right? If we can reach out to folks, and, and if we're the ones who are struggling, if we are the ones who are on the fringes, stay tight. I was thinking about this as the as the lion is going along, <laughs> and as we're, as we're trying to be alert, I have to tell you, if I am not alert, if I am not paying attention, I get distracted from what I need to do. Um, if I'm stressed, I don't always make good decisions. If I'm stressed, having a milkshake and a donut for lunch seems sensible. It isn't. I know it isn't. And the other thing is, if I'm in a crowd that's eating milkshakes and donuts for lunch, it's easy for me to get distracted by the crowd and go along instead of being alert and thinking, what, what am I doing? So also if I'm straggling and I'm alone, it's easy for me to say that, right? It's easier than when I'm with a brother or a sister who'll say, are you making the healthy choice for you today? And sometimes I'll, I'll agree, yes, but sometimes I'm just going to go for the milkshake and walk longer. We get distracted when we're stressed. And if suffering doesn't cause stress, I don't know what is going to cause it. We need to stay tight. And Paul concludes with that. He says, greet one another. Stay in touch. This is how we prepare for the trouble ahead. 
We don't know what's coming and we don't know when. But we do know that there will be suffering. The books that I consulted did talk about suffering because of um, sin, because of uh, struggles in marriage or illnesses and things like that. And those are real. It's not the same as suffering for our faith, but staying tight with the flock can help us through that as well. Being willing, eager, and authentic, whether we're in the shepherd role or whether we are the flock role. We are all in one great flock with the family of God throughout the world, and we have a great shepherd, thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.